Uh, let's see. This is uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date is September 16th of 2021. And yesterday, I think I made a couple YouTube videos yesterday. I actually made a third one that was 45 minutes. And I was just looking around on the uh, YouTube channels and I forget what was in I forget what was in the video but it was in it was 45 minutes and immediately of course I mentioned during the uh, I think I showed a little bit of a video a YouTube a little bit of a couple of YouTube sites just a little tiny bit and I mentioned that uh, I would have to I'd make sure I gave credit for it a link below and uh, that I would not uh, monetize it, you know, because there was a little bit of somebody else's video in there. And as the video was being uploaded, uh, uh, YouTube, you know, a thing popped up saying that, uh, well, when I went to the thing where you do get ready to mark that you're going to monetize it, when I got there before I could even click, no, I don't want to monetize it, it said that uh, wouldn't even give me the options of picking that uh, a claim had been copied, you know, on it. And in the past, I think every time in the past, uh, when something like that's happened, the video would still be, uh, you know, I could still allow the video to be seen, uh, but there was that claim, so any money that would be generated uh, would of course have gone to the other people but uh, anyway I couldn't even the video wouldn't even you know it was it showed like to me but it didn't show to anybody else apparently uh, that kind of sucks I, I can understand a position that uh, YouTube is you know in I just think that something you know, something different should be done. I'm not sure how it should be done. Uh, I'm not sure how it should be done, but something different should be done with the whole the whole situation. You know, there's companies that are set up that have software, and when I say company, I think it's I don't think it's probably there's it's I think it's automated. The thing, the software automatically runs on all videos on YouTube, and if if that software, if their software, not YouTube software, but if their software decides that something is theirs, you know, they file a you know file a claim on the thing, and. I just think that the, that whole system is, uh, I'm out, out of my depth a little bit here. I mean, as I, you know, this is not my area. I started to say my area of expertise. I'm not sure I have an area of expertise, but uh, I think that the company claiming that there is their material there and that they're, uh, that their copyright thing has been, you know, I think that they should have to prove that. I think it should be on them to prove that myself. Maybe that's wrong. I don't think so. I think they should have to prove that. Uh, and then I think, too, there should be, uh, I don't like to see big corporations throwing their weight around, uh, and uh, you know, but I think maybe there there should be something like that YouTube that YouTube could do. So you know, say I uh, paid one of these companies. I actually heard I don't I, I guess it's the true. I think I saw it on like a sixty minute show. They had an expose day, and they said in Texas, I'm in Texas by the way that there is some small town, they named the small town, and uh, they showed a small office building because it's a small town, 
and every one of the rooms in this small office building, nobody was there. And, you know, like there was, I don't know if there was a lawyer's name on the door or, you know, some name is on this door. There's really nobody there. But their, uh, their lawyers, I guess, but some up someplace, probably in Las, you know, Las Vegas or Los Angeles or New York City or something. And they have, and I doubt the software, you know, I doubt the heart, the computer system is even there. I think it's probably, it might be in, in uh, Switzerland, who knows, you know. It does the scanning, you know. Um, and it scans all the software on the internet, I guess just, not just YouTube. And, you know, using code and... I don't know if you if you were singing, you know, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. It, it, it's going to say, okay, that belongs to, you know, if those people are signed up for it. Of course, everybody signs up for it. If you are a musician or you have a record out or what whatever, uh, most of those people probably sign up and they get X amount of money if their music is played some, you know, someplace. But... Anyway, okay, then what happens is, well, you know, when the Iowa, oh, I know when this was uh, being reported, so it's changed a little bit. This was when, uh, yeah, years ago when young people, primarily, I guess, were downloading music, you know, rock and roll music or whatever, that music that I guess it could have been country and western or whatever. You know, downloading it from the internet someplace. I don't think, I'm not sure that YouTube even existed then. They were downloading music. And uh, so these companies with head, with a little with a little tiny office that nobody was in, in their scanning would know that, you know, music had been downloaded. And there were, uh, I think it might have been before, might have been before the internet when uh, like computer bulletin board systems were, and maybe that was when it was going on. Can't remember now, long time. Uh, so people were getting, you know, mom and dad were, would get a email, I guess, maybe a letter, uh, saying, uh, well, uh, our music was downloaded and you owe, you know, $5,000 for the music. <laughs> I mean, this is a family, you know, uh. Of course, it varied, you know, the amount of man and money. And then, of course, these lawyers, lawyers, let me do this thing, uh, lawyers, uh, will make a deal with you, you know, okay, you know, you don't have to pay 5000 you know. You can, and, but there, there was, that was big news because people were being, I mean, people were being crushed. And they, with this small town in, uh, Texas. They don't. I don't think they had a uh, Walmart or a McDonald's or I don't think they had it part, hardly anything except that office building. And I'm sure they had a few other things and a city hall, I guess, and a, a, a police station that maybe you know <laughs> only used reserve officers or didn't use anybody. You know, it was closed unless they got a call or something. Um, but they had a courthouse. And I'm not sure the judge or that the, the attorneys even had to show up, but they would get a, a court order, you know, that uh, this family, you know, maybe they they were sent a thing saying you owe know, three thousand five hundred dollars for you know music that was downloaded, but you know, uh, 
they'd get a court order or something against them that they had to pay, and then they would, people would, you know, pay us, you know, can we make a deal? And they'd make a deal or whatever. And then I think that maybe that thing is still, maybe that situation is not, I just, I was thinking, I got it mixed up, I was thinking that, but I would imagine that it just switched over to now those offices are still vacant and they're set up to do, you know, you know, do this. Maybe they wouldn't need the having a town with with a judge. That's not all the judge did, by the way. <laughs> you know, it was like, and it wouldn't be like because all these different companies, you know, had an office there. But what would happen is, of course, they're not going to have for this court hearing. Court hearing. Uh, uh, all these lawyers show up. It was, you know, they'd make an, an, an arrangement. Okay, Joe, uh, all this month or next month or whatever, you just show up at court for the hearing, and of course nobody else shows up, you know. The thing's not going to be contested. Uh, but if somebody did show up, everything was all, you know, it was all arranged. We're not talking about justice here. We're not, I guess we're talking about the legal system, but Anyway, how did they get on that rant? I don't know. But something should be done. Well, I like one thing that, of course, YouTube is making money. Google is, you know, making money. But, and I'm not sure exactly how this system is working now with these, you know, hits on uh, things. I very rarely, I've got over a thousand videos here and I've probably had four or five uh, hits or whatever. Uh, and one was I was walking through a mall, shopping mall, and they had the music in the background and there was some, I could barely hear it and it wasn't cranked up all that loud, but when I was walking through there, I, I was, you know, making a video. This was years ago. The video's on YouTube someplace. I said, I, I, I wonder if this is going to get a hit for, you know, and sure enough, you know, the thing does. I think there's something that YouTube could do, but YouTube doesn't want to have a whole lot of, I'm guessing, I don't have any inside information. <laughs> I, I think that uh, YouTube just wants to take the easy route out. They don't want to have a controversy going on with people screaming that people are using their you know, uh, their video or their music or something like that. So they just have it set up. If somebody makes a claim, then they make, you know, make a claim. I, I think actually for like reviewing purposes or something like that, that I, you know, I'm not a lawyer. I think you're supposed to be able to use I don't know, a minute or two minutes or something of something. Say you're reviewing a movie uh, like Friendly Persuasion that you could show a little bit of the thing. Like uh, if you're reviewing movies on, say, YouTube, you could show a little bit of it, a very short amount. I think I got a hit uh, copyright claim or whatever and I showed part, not all of it even, of what do you call it when they show it? Give, there's a, when they want you to see a movie or something and they put out a, not a preview, uh, what do they call it? So I was, <laughs> it was on YouTube, of course, that I was showing a little bit. I said, hey, here, this is a great movie. It might have been Hugo, I can't remember. Uh, or maybe Go Go Rabbit or whatever. Something I, that I really like that this is really great. You got to see it. And here's a little clip, but I did not show the entire, you know, the entire clip that the company put out to get people to go see. I just showed a little bit of it because I was, and I got a hit on it. I think YouTube could have a little bit of balls 
or testicles. And if any of these places, which I'm sure they do, uh, if any of them who are making these hits like that, if they have a site on YouTube where they promote their stuff or whatever, if they make, say, X number of claims, and these claims are made, you know, like automatically, you know, just zoom. Uh, it's amazing that, you know, that, that they can, uh, like if you're saying happy birthday to you, you know, click, they can do it. Uh, but maybe, like, if they have a site, uh, let's say, the, I can't think of anybody, the Beatles, you know, if they, if they had a site on YouTube and they were putting their new material, on, you know, on and they had, and they wanted, you know, hey, you know, the Beatles are going to be performing in uh, Kansas City on such and such a date or something like that. I think that YouTube should just do something, have it set up like, okay, uh, but you made X number of automated, you know, X number of claims against other people. Therefore, you can't uh, do such and such, whatever they want, you know, you can't, uh, you're not going to be recommended, you're, uh, uh, you know, whatever they could, uh, whatever they could do. So I just think they could have a little bit of balls about the, the thing. What do I care? I really don't care. I, a few times, quite a time, quite a bit of time, I just turned off the uh, ability for me to, because it doesn't matter, because I don't get that many views that it matters, but I turn it, you know, I just turn it off. And I've thought about, I've even mentioned a few times, I'm just going to turn it off permanently. The uh, ability to uh, generate any revenue, you know, I actually, I think, um, I, I think I make like twenty-four dollars a month, you know, in commission, and they don't from you know YouTube by people viewing. Um, they don't pay you until you have earned a hundred dollars worth. Of, then they deposit in your account. So every three months, maybe four months, I get a hundred dollars, you know, deposited directly into my account. I'm a poor man, so you know, I would actually, you know, if, if I had, if I, if I was getting like a hundred dollars a month, I'd be happy with that. Hundred dollars a month, I could buy. You know, I could, I could buy a new camera. I could, you know buy a new, some new stuff. I'm spending my own money, you know, I'm spending my own money and uh, I'm on a limited, you know, limited income or whatever. So anyway, that's my rant and rave on. Uh, it it doesn't bother me. I, I, think, I think actually when I get those hits, copyright claim hits or whatever, I don't think it bothers me. This one did. I, I spent 45 minutes making a video. I don't remember what, uh, that's a little problem I have. I don't remember what's on there, on the, end, on the video. Uh, but uh, it's kind of like wasted, you know, wasted time. Uh, I don't mind it actually when they, which I've only had it done three or four times, I think, where they, uh, they say if, for any money generated because of that video that you know that you put there, it, it's going to go to this company. Uh, uh, I just kind of hate to see people screwing this. You know, I mean, uh, screwing the system, and that's and that's what they're you know that's what those people are doing. That's what those lawyers, you know, are uh, are doing. Okay, let's see. They got that rally coming up here on, I think, the 18th. Today's the 16th. It's coming up, I guess, I think Saturday. Yeah, I've got a friend who just uh, happens that he is going to be 
He may be there now. Uh, he's a, uh, well, I even hate to say, I was thinking, think, you know, saying that he's a veteran, which he is, uh, during the, he's a Vietnam veteran, a friend of mine, uh, great guy. Uh, and he's going there for some type of a veteran type, but it's not, you know, I was thinking when I, that that would like, that you wouldn't think that he was a terrorist like the ones that on, you know, the six that attacked the, uh, but then I, that doesn't, you know, a whole bunch of veterans were, uh, and police officers, you know, were actually involved in doing that. But so anyway, he's not, he has nothing to do with uh, the, the, uh, Trump people. He never. He didn't vote for Trump, of course, and and he had nothing to do with the June six thing. He's there for some type of a veteran thing or something else. Uh, he's the exact opposite of those kind of uh, people. He does uh, all types. I don't meals on wheels. He does. He does that. Uh, he. Uh, You know, in the past, spent his own money. That when they had those trips where the veterans were, you know, World War II veterans are dying out, and uh, I know he 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 went with some of these groups. You know, from his hometown. You know, he paid his own. You know, paid his own way and everything, and and went with them so he could push them in the wheelchair and they could see Washington D.C. and see, you know, the, the monuments and that type of stuff for these people before. And that and some of them were, you know, he does stuff like that. So he's definitely not, but he's going to be there. This came up, he had something scheduled to to uh, to be there and he's going to be there when the, I'm not sure what's going to happen with uh, I don't think that it's going to be like it was, but I think there probably will be something because these people are, a, a lot of these people, uh, the Trump type people, the ones who rioted, you know, who attacked, who wanted to kill the Republican Vice President of the United States or incapacitate him or burn down the Capitol or do something so that President Trump could then uh, declare that there was a, like a national emergency and that the election results had to be uh, not certified or something. I mean, whatever it was, whatever his uh, crazy thing in his head, whatever it was, you know. Uh, so I don't, I don't think there's going to be that kind of rioting, but with the people who are going, and I don't think it's going to be as big I don't know. I don't. I you know. I. I think a lot of people are probably sitting. You know that. Feel the same way. Yeah, you know, and maybe they were ones who, you know, did riot and. Uh, uh, there, but I think they may be sitting back thinking, oh, "This is not you know." You know, five hundred or so people. Are facing criminal charges and maybe more for that, and uh, there's a lot more we don't know that I think may come out with an investigation, maybe some actual members of the Republican Party, Congress, members of the Congress uh, committed sedition and, you know, treason, and it wouldn't actually be treason, I know, because of the wording of the law, but uh, some of them are even, you know, guilty and could, you know, could face arrest and, you know, imprisonment and everything else. Uh, as unbelievable as that sounds. Um, but I think the problem is going to be you're going to have, you know, people going there. And are some of those people on a no-fly list? What's going to happen if they if they if their you know name has been added to a no-fly list because of the June sixth thing? And they get to the airport, whatever airport it is, 
and they're told you can't go. Uh, you know, you can't fly on this airplane. There's, you know, you can, <laughs> you can take an Uber. You know, you can take a bus. You can take. I'm not sure they could go on a bus or a train. You know, uh, I think they probably could. Maybe not a train. I'm not sure. Uh, I think they could on a train. You know, aircraft you're worried about. You know. Um, so I mean, there's going to be that possibility of these people who are going to go ballistic, you know, and what no telling what they're going to do. And then I think some of the people who do go on the twentieth, who have no intention of you know attacking the Capitol again, or do, they just want to demonstrate loudly and uh, you know show their love for their their man, Trump, you know. But if some of them, something happens, I mean, you know, there's some type of, if they're violating some law and maybe the, the police, you know, this time, Capitol Police and whoever else, they're, they're, they may be, we're not going to let this thing get out of hand. So if you're standing in the middle of the street blocking traffic where, you know, in the past we would ignore that or something, you know, or it, it just may be the police are not going to, and then... Then you're going to have, you know, somebody, people who are just going to go because they're mentally ill and they're not very smart, who are going to go ballistic or something. And then you're going to have some, and if you have somebody that, you know, you know, an assault rifle, man, you know, uh, or if somebody has an explosive device, you know, or something. Uh, a lot of damage could be. I think, too, and it's unfortunate. I, I don't, you know, I don't think that the the capital is going to be overrun or anything at all like that. But I, I think from this point on, you know, for a long time in history, you know, uh, the Capitol Police and the National Guard and everybody else. They're not going to let it get to that point. I mean, if it gets to the way it was before, before the Capitol Police were, you know, uh, you know, these are U.S. citizens and and they're, you know, I, I think it's going to be, you know, you're you're hitting a police officer with a fire extinguisher, and the and the police don't have the ability to, you know. Rather than let it go on, some people are going to be shot and killed. Right, you know, right there, hitting hitting a police officer or slamming a police officer's head in the door, slamming the door on the police officer. It's going to be if the police can't, you know, immediately, you know, immediately change that situation. I think you know, lethal weapons will be used. It won't be good for the United States. And the, our image, and it won't be good for the, won't be even good for the Capitol Police. It'll be entirely, in, be entirely, entirely appropriate for them to do that. Any other police department in the United, entire United States, maybe the world, if you, if you, if you're stomping on a police officer's head or something, and they can't, you know, lethal force would be used. But I don't think it, it's going to be. It would be good. Uh, especially since the other side is stupid and the other side is crazy. There's nothing more that, you know, Trump would love to see a bunch of his followers, you know, laid out on the lawn of the Capitol building, you know, being put into body bags, and then he could say, look, you know, look at what the government, look what the American government did to, you know, peaceful protesters, you know. So, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a, you know, that big of a deal. But I think there'll be some crazy people there, and I think there may be the problem with people going there, you know, flying on the airplane, and, you know, maybe they're going there to protest. But I think if the, you know, if the airline says, oh, you need to put a mask on, that'll be enough to set them off. Or just about, you know, just about anything can set them off because they are so stupid and they are so mentally ill and you know they're in a cult the cult of you know 
not Bob Jones, you know, but the cult of of Trump. So uh, anyway, I'm using, by the way, and that was sort of a test done on that video that I made. I'm using Manicam, uh, and I see what I did is I forgot to set up the. Uh, you know, being able to go full screen video and that type of stuff. I need to go in and change this. If it were, and I, I watched the other video, and apparently the uh, audio was okay and everything was okay. And then, of course, I'm surprised. I think that's the first time they didn't. It must be that the people who can claim claim that you know they can decide. Okay, well, y'all let it run and just give us the money from people who go to, you know. Of course, they're not going to make any money off of me, but if somebody has a, you know, a site with a, a lot of viewers, then they would be getting money. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, Department of Homeland Security warns upcoming right-wing rally has potential for violence. Concerns about the justice for J J6 rally planned for Saturday has been detailed in an unclassified intelligence briefing obtained by CNN. Uh, Roger Stone, I haven't heard about him in a long time, served with the January 6th lawsuit while making a lot, oh, Roger Stone served with a January 6th lawsuit while making a live radio appearance. Uh, incredibly dangerous. Trump is trying to get big live promoters chosen to run the 2024 election. That's really bad that we've got uh, states, Republican states. They're trying to actually, I mean, it's, I, there again, I use the word treasonous, you know, but that. In order for something to be treason, because of our, it, which it, it's in the Constitution that treason has to be that you do something to aid uh, or help a country that we are at war with, and we haven't been at war with anybody since the end of World War Two. You know, we've had action in Korea and Vietnam and. Afghanistan and Iraq and none of those were ever declared war. So, um, which is something that should be, you know, I've talked about that in the past. We, we, we ought to get back to a thing. Okay, do you want to go into, you know, you want to go into uh, Iran or Iraq or Afghanistan or North Korea or whatever? They're, you know, of course the president should be able to take immediate action if, you know, we're threatened. But so far as going to war, you know, and he should be able to react with what he, whatever forces are needed under the circumstances. But Congress should have to declare war. And that would uh, stop. And then, of course, I was opposed to the uh, Iraq war. And I, you know, I went through a list of things, you know, a list of things like, uh, okay, yeah, we... I'm opposed to it, but if we're going to do it, number one, you know, uh, Congress needs to declare war. Number two, Congress needs to pass a law uh, calling back into operation uh, 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 the draft, the draft, you know, which. <laughs> None of these things, by the way, would they ever, you know, the Congress would not declare war, Congress would not, you know, call it. And I said, uh, another, my thing was, uh, Congress needs to, would need to pass a law, uh, a tax law, that uh, Americans would pay for the war. Everybody would, should have to pay a tax to pay for the war. Any one of these things, and I had, a, I think, a couple other things on there also, which, you know, and that's when I was, you know, blogging. I don't know if that's on YouTube or not. But that's when I was doing the written blog part. 
And uh, there were a few people that didn't you know, why would you do And the, no, the point was, Congress wouldn't do that, you know, and the American people wouldn't stand for it. Because, you know, for the Iraq War, uh, Bush administration said, it's not going to cost us anything at all. Uh, we're going to use their oil, we'll take their oil and use their oil. It's not going to cost us anything at all. And of course it cost us, cost taxpayers a lot of money, not counting the number of lives lost, and not just U.S. lives, but our allies, you know, lives, and the Iraqi people, you know. Wine shoes, by the way. Probably why I'm making a face. It's pretty dark in here. I've got the shades closed. I don't have the curtains pulled. I got the camera I adjusted, you know, I could adjust it, I adjusted it, that's why. Uh, anyway, um, I mentioned this in the other video that a Florida chiropractor signed hundreds of mask exemptions uh, on kids so that they didn't ha wouldn't have to wear a mask if they went to school and stuff like that. I talked about that. I talked about chiropractors. And I talked about uh, the thing with uh, uh, especially the uh, chiropractors. And I'm not going to go over all that stuff I made in the other video because to, to hell with it. But I talked about it. In Miami at these little strip malls that you hardly do any business. You know, maybe a donut shop there and people pull in real quick and get a dozen donuts or something like that. Another thing, but there would be a chiropractic office there and the parking lot would be filled with cars from other states. You know, they would have their, you could see their state tags and the, that place would be packed. And you knew what they were doing. These chiropractors were writing prescriptions for oxy codadone or whatever that thing is. I've never taken one, you know. The uh, drug that everybody wanted. And uh, now if you have, you know, because of that, uh, if you have a pain, and my arthritis is really bad, but the uh, naproxen takes care of it. And uh, pretty well. But if you really need it, you to go to a doctor. The doctor not want to, doesn't want to give it to you because the, you know the. Uh, the government is watching. The, you know, if you write too many prescriptions, if you write any any prescriptions for it, you're probably going to be you know, uh, they're going to be looking at you. And these, of course, chiropractors were writing. You know, you know, what are you here for? I, I'll just throw it to you. You know. That type of a situation. I've sort of ran into that. I mentioned this before in a couple of videos or whatever. Uh, I was married, I got married at age 26. At age, let's see, six years later, we were married six years. Well, we were married 12 years. But six years later, I came home from work and my wife had uh, moved all the furniture out. And uh, the kids. She wanted a divorce. And uh, I didn't know where she was or where the kids were or anything like that. And uh, I started having chest pain. And of course, I, I mean, chest pain. I never had chest pain before. Started having a uh, What can I pull up here? I guess I should pull up. Uh, let's go here. Let's go to. I need to fix this. I'm going to end this thing here pretty quick. Let me tell my little story here. Uh, I've told it before. Um, so only I started having chest pain. I mean, bad chest pain. And I worked hospital security, you know. But I worked every day. Uh, I never missed a day's work, you know. They, they it was a bad neighborhood, you, you know, they, I, I had to be there. Uh, out of, at, at that hospital, we had 
two security officers shot in the line of duty, you know, in the three years or so that I worked there. I couldn't not show up. And, uh, but I was suffering and suffering also with, uh, you know, chest pain. But then I was, I was like, okay, she's going to be sorry. I'm going to die. And, uh, she'll be, <laughs> you know, that's a crazy, you know, that's a crazy attitude. You know, she's going to be sorry. And finally, it hurt when you have, when your heart is skipping, that's what it was doing. Actually, it wasn't skipping. I've mentioned that before. I thought it was skipping. That's what they talk about is skipping. What happens is you have a regular heartbeat. No, normal people, okay. You have a regular heartbeat. You have a regular heartbeat. You have a regular heartbeat. Uh, what was happening with me and happens with other people that have a situation like this. Regular heartbeat. Ooh, early a little heartbeat. And so then your system is like, okay, he, you know, he already had this, the heart rate, the heartbeat, so it, we're not going to beat, you know. And then regular heartbeat, you know, maybe regular heartbeat, and then, you know, little tiny heartbeat right away, you know. And then you skip, you know, then, it, then your heart doesn't beat because, oh, well, we already beat, you know. Hey, you're not going to overwork us, you know. So, and then your heart the muscle and stuff around your heart or something, you know, they get, they get, to, you know, what's going on here? So they get to hurting or something. Uh, so finally I went to the emergency room, you know, and they hooked up an EKG or whatever. And, well, the nurse, you know, listened or whatever, and then called EKG stat, you know, I knew what that meant. Came down, did that, and then the doctor came in and he said, and, uh, have you been under any stress or anything? And I said, well, yeah, my wife, you know, left me and I don't know where she is and don't know where my my two children are, you know. And he said, okay, I'm, <clears throat> this is, you know, stress or whatever, so I'm going to write your prescription for Valium. Valium was big then. I'd never taken any Valium, you know, never taken anything really, ever, really. And so... I got a vial of, of uh, took one or two, boom, <laughs> no irregular heartbeat, everything was fine. Anyway, unfortunately, the wife came back to me. And the reason she left me, in case you're wondering, she had, uh, she had breathing difficulty and also, she was using a breathalyzer, and back then, that's when they started that thing of, that was on the news, you know. Uh, you're not, you should not use a breathalyzer more than once a day, and people were using it, and she was using it a lot. And she went with her mother to the Hickman Mills Clinic, and was in there for, she was in there for a pap smear, and, uh, I believe, and I was working, you know, and... Um, the doctor came in, the family doctor, you know, he came in and she was just using her breathalyzer for, <laughs> not the first time, by the way, but uh, he came in and said, how often do you use that? And then she lied. And I guess she's probably not a very good liar, you know. She probably said, well, this is the second time today or something like that. And he took, or she wasn't using it, she hadn't used it yet, she had it. And she said, I need it. And he said, no. And he took it away from her. And then she had an attack. And uh, partially it was because, well, partially because, you know, she, uh, I hate to say, because people are often accused of not needing the medication that they have or what, but when he took it away from her and when she thought she needed it, and maybe she did, then she went into a full-blown, you know, a full-blown at attack. And uh, they gave her immediately uh, shots of adrenaline or something like that and called me immediately. Uh, for some reason, they didn't send her to the hospital by ambulance. 
but they called me to drive, and I went and picked her up, picked her up there, and her mother went on home or something, and so I picked her up, you know, so she's in a car, and they called ahead, and Baptist Hospital has, is expecting a direct, you know, uh, for her to be there, and I'm driving her, and she isn't acting, you know, she was breathing okay, because they shot her up with steroids. And, uh, but I thought, uh, what, and I just thought, well, she's going to the hospital, so she's not, you know, not looking forward to that. She had some breathing dip, but she was not normal. And something was wrong. So I took her and she was admitted. And, uh, then I went home because of the kids, you know, of course. And then I went back to the hospital that night or the next day, and when I got there, the, and remember, I'd work, been working hospital security. I, <laughs> this is all so familiar to me, you know, except with, for me, you know. The nurse comes over and says, uh, Mr. Howard, uh, your wife doesn't want to see you. And I said, what do you mean she doesn't want to see me? Well, you know, you're, you're having marital problems. And I said, and which is, I, I, I use this thing a, a lot. Not, well, not used it. It was, you know, true. Uh, I said, what's going on? You know, no, well, you know, you know. And, uh, you know, we've called a psychiatrist to, you know, to, uh, or called her psychiatrist or something. And uh, I said, I know you're not going to believe this. I said, my wife and I, we've been married for six years. And in six years, we've never had any kind of a disagreement at all about anything. And uh, I used that, anyway, I left. And anyway, like uh, like the next day or whatever, maybe, ne maybe the next day. Uh, well, that's when I came home and I came in. And really, I was not upset. At, I mean, I came in and everything was gone. I mean, the refrigerator was still, the stove was still there, but everything else was gone. And I went into our room, went into the kids' room, all the kids' stuff was gone. And I was just, I couldn't, and I thought, you know, I've never been, I've never had anything stolen from me in my life. I've never had anybody ever break in and steal anything. I was like, I just kind of walking around, you know, I went into the, our, my wife and I's bedroom, you know. I went to the closet and opened up the closet. All the clothes were gone. But that was her side of the closet, you know. I, all, all the clothes were gone. And I went back, I can't believe this. They took the kids' toys, they took such and they took that's not, you know. I can't believe that. And I just, I was just, uh, it doesn't make, this doesn't make sense. What, what's going on? And then I went back into uh, my wife and I's bedroom, and I'd opened up. I'd opened up her side. Her stuff was all gone. And then I opened up my side, and my uniforms were there. That was, and maybe a few. I didn't have anything, you know, other than <laughs> work clothes and a few. You know, every, that was all there. And then I knew. And then, I, you know. Uh, and what had happened is they had put her on massive amounts of cortisone. And anyway, I, I, well, I, don't, want, don't, want, I don't want to take up too long. Uh, she filed for divorce. She said, I beat when the lawyer called, you know, and he called like the next day or whatever. Oh, you know, this is on so. And your law, you know, back then, by the way, of course, a woman, well, a person couldn't get a divorce and let, there had to be a reason. That's the way the law was written. And the, it had to be mental cruelty or uh, you beat your spouse or something like that. So that's the way they find, they trying to finally change the law where you can, now you can get a divorce for, you know, just because you want one. But a lawyer said, well, you know, your wife has filed for worse, you know, and I said, why, what for? And I said, and I said to him, you know, I said, I, 
this all came. I said, you're not going to believe this. We've been married for six years. We've never had a disagreement of any kind. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, then I checked uh, what medication was she, you know, what she, not with him, you know, with the hospital. And uh, it was like, well, why do you want to know? What, what kind of narcotic or what are you giving? Well, nothing. She, she was here for breathing difficulty. We wouldn't give her anything, you know. And then I checked, and I forget exactly if it was called cortisone or if it was something like that. It was, and then I looked up in the uh, medical, you know, because I worked at, the, at a hospital. It was easy. I went to the thing and looked up uh, contraindicated in cases of people who have had mental illness and can cause, and then it listed everything that she was experiencing. And then it gave the amount, you know, here's, you know, what you know, and she was taking massive more amount than that. And anyway, so I, uh, uh, you know, told my lawyer, okay, you know, uh, she wants a divorce, you know, to give her the divorce. I said, the only thing is just however long it, you have to answer, just take, she's coming, she, they're taking her off of the medicine, but they have to take her off gradually. And it's going to be a while, just stall illegally as long as you can, you know, file at the last minute, the counter or whatever it is, and then if she comes off, you know, and anyway, then of course I told her, you know, well eventually she let me know where she was, you know. And uh, uh, and I told her, you know, well, that the reason you're thinking and acting the way you are is because, oh no, no, that's not, you know, she was like, that. and still, by the way, if I were to bring this up with her, which I wouldn't, if it were to be brought up, she'd say, no, that had nothing to do with it at all. But uh, sure enough, finally she was, you know, the divorce hadn't taken place yet because, you know, my lawyer was stalling as much as he could legally do. And then uh, we got back together, unfortunately, for another six years. Okay, the point I was going to make was, before I got sidetracked, the doctor gave me that prescription for Valium. I took one or two over with. No irregular heart rhythm. Uh, that's all I took of the Valium, you know, the heart. The problem was taken, chain was taken care of. I still had the prescription six years later, six years later, my wife decides she wants a divorce uh, for various reasons, not because she took any uh, cortisone or whatever. She uh, decided, and I started having chest pain, of course. Now, this time I didn't tell the lawyer to drag it out or anything, you know. I'd, okay, you know. I mean, I tried to explain to her you know, why we should stay together, and she had her reasons. Uh, but, oh, anyway, so I started having these chest pains you know, again. And I still had the prescription six years later. I'd only taken one or two of, you know, one or two of them. And I uh, took one or two of them, and the chest pain went away. So, and eventually I threw the I threw the Valium away. Of course, it was already at that point it was already six years old. Uh, many years later, I started having you know irregular heart rhythm and, and chest pain and problems like that. By oh by that time, well before that, you know, everybody wanted Valium and lithium. Everybody, you know. Housewives, everybody, everybody wanted it. You know, it was great. Uh, 
And back a few years ago, you know, now it's, well, I think we've moved on from oxycodone to what, I don't know what it is, you know, now. But if you go to a doctor here in the United States, I don't know about overseas, and you're having something, you know, hey, uh, like a, uh, when I went, uh, I think this is when I was in Florida, and when I, my uh, problem started again, uh, I went to the doctor and I said, you know, I'm having, you know, uh, well, I went to the, to the doctor's office, and I think it was that I had to switch to a new doctor insurance company or something like that. I'm going to end here pretty quick. You're probably already gone anyway. Uh, but I said, you know, I had, you know, I've had this chest pain. I had it, you know, and then I had it again, six years after that I had it, and I haven't had it, but now I've got it again, bad. And I said, I took Valium before. No. Uh, uh, no what? Uh, you're not getting any Valium. You know, we don't give, we just don't give Valium anyway. Uh, and so now, you know, our system is sucking. I mean, it, uh, anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm going to stop this, and then I'm going to work on this to make sure that I have, so you don't have to look at me in a little picture when I'm yabbing, you know, going on like this, and you could, uh, so, thank you very much for watching, and i got to work on OBS and making sure I have a full screen, you know, video available, so, Thank you very much for watching. Never get married, by the way. If you get married, never have children. Yeah, I love my children. We've got, we have four of them. They're, of course, all grown. Married with children. God help us. Thank you very much for watching.